Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger. My friends, I think it's safe to say that fighting games are back and back in a very, very big way. So as you probably know, EVO 2023 wrapped up not too long ago. I myself was even there and it was fantastic. If I did this right, there's probably some pictures playing in the background of pictures I took at EVO. But yeah, it was a blast being there. I've never actually been to EVO before. So seeing everything on site, getting to meet a bunch of people I've you know known online but never met in person, that was really fantastic. Getting hands-on with a lot of the current games and upcoming games, that was also great. And of course, EVO 2023 this year was basically a big statement, if nothing else. So many great games, so many great showings. Obviously, we've been missing a lot of EVOs in the last few years due to you know, COVID and all that kind of stuff, right? And last year we had it, but it wasn't like this year. This year being the biggest EVO of all time and one of the biggest esports events ever. And with that said, I think it's very safe to say that fighting games have made their mark again in a very big way that we haven't even really seen since like the 90s. Even people outside of fighting games, outside the FGC, are starting to take note. People who are big in esports, and esports recently has been on a bit of a downturn, especially with Overwatch 2 not hitting the way it needs to be, whereas fighting games are growing and growing and growing and growing. Also ratioed this guy, but in a positive way, because I absolutely agree with what he's saying, but you know, my number was higher. So why are we hitting this critical mass with fighting games, right? Well, it's twofold, both on the game front and I guess you could say the esports front. Because the esports front, as shown by EVO 2023, is also exploding in a very big way. The games front, well, everything's just kind of finally happening, right? A lot of pots that have been on the stove for years and years and years are all finally coming to fruition, with obviously Street Fighter VI launching this year being the big cap, and obviously more to come, and we'll talk about that, right? And on the esports front, uh, what the gentleman was mentioning before is like so many esports events are like hyper corporate, all that kind of stuff, right? And fighting games, are just some guys, you know? We're just some regular people. Yes, I guess EVO is a bit more official these days, especially now that it's owned by PlayStation and Sony. But even on that level of corporate scale, it's still grassroots, right? You still look for volunteers to do brackets, to do pools, all that kind of stuff, versus a more corporate event are always more invite only. And well, frankly, very little to no room for community versus community. Well, that's the C in the FGC now, isn't it? And I think that's a very big part of what's making the FGC and fighting games in general ascendant as it is right now. If you want to make money in Overwatch or something, right? You got to do some politicking and get on a team and then get the sponsorships and all that, right? If you want to make money in Street Fighter, all you got to do is be good enough and show up. That's as simple as that. And no other esport, regardless of the game, really works that way. The open brackets is what makes the FGC what it is. Not to say there's not the occasional invitational, because of course there is, right? But like the heart and soul of a fighting game tournament is the fact that anybody can show up and participate. Anyone with a controller, as long as you put in that time and effort, hey, maybe you're gonna be the winner. Do we have people that dominate year over year? Sure, of course we do, right? But do we have people that show up out of quote unquote nowhere and make massive upsets? Yes, we do all the time as well. And you're just not gonna get that kind of stuff in a more sterile esports environment. So that said, right? Fighting game renaissance, let's look at what's coming up. Cause once again, I mentioned the nineties, right? There's so many games, there's so many styles of ways to play now. Whatever your specific taste is, rest well assured you will be catered to. So let's talk about it. And the real beauty here is I can just go by like what was shown at Evo itself, right? But yeah, Street Fighter VI obviously started this year, will remain strong for years and years and years to come. We have Rashid. New character Aki sometime in fall, right? And Street Fighter VI is a big deal this year. It'll be a big deal next year. It'll be a big deal the year after that. It'll be a big deal the year after that. So on and so forth. Fighting games plant their feet in the ground. They are very much here for a very long time. And so many massive franchises are all getting their new entries either this year or very soon. How about an all new Mortal Kombat? Kind of a big deal, right? That's coming out next month, man. Next month, that's like no time at all. And here we are with a new full-fledged Mortal Kombat and a Mortal Kombat that seems to be returning to form in a way that some people didn't necessarily like out of MK11, as MK1 seems to be hitting on all cylinders big time. Also, if you haven't seen uh, the latest stuff, it looks like we're getting in a full-on adventure mode with a world map and everything, so hey, that'll be cool. So regardless though, your big budget AAA fighting game needs will definitely be met with Mortal Kombat 1, I'm very, very sure. And speaking of big budget AAA fighting games, you know, Tekken 8, 
maybe not this year, but very soon sometime next year, right? This fighting game renaissance isn't just only happening in 2023, right? It's going to extend for some years to come. Evo showing off Raven, finally returning to Tekken, and also all new character Azucena, who's obsessed with copy. She's actually pretty neat. There's a breakdown on the channel. And I have no doubt Tekken 8 is also going to impress. Like the one weakness that Tekken 7 always had was the online. And we had the network test for Tekken 8. And maybe it wasn't perfect, but they have a lot of time to see the stats, look at everything, improve and adapt, right? So I think Tekken 8 will be where it needs to be, as that's really the only weakness of the Tekken franchise was the online play. And if Tekken nails that out of the gate, and once again, Tekken 8 then it's going to be around for years and years and years and years, if you can play online with no worries, Tekken 8 is going to be a dominant force for a very long time to come. Also, it's not just all the big AAA titles, right? There's a lot of fighting game indie titles that are either ongoing and getting new DLC or launching very soon, like, say, Pocket Bravery. Pocket Bravery has been in development for, let's say, a hot minute now, and it's finally ready to come out this month, at the end of the month on PC and shortly thereafter on console. And I can tell you, man, I played this game quite a bit. This game's got a lot of heart. There's a lot of love, and it's a good fighting game on top of that. Rollback netcode, all the things you would want on top of a good fighting system. And I do believe there's an open beta that starts shortly later this month. So regardless of the scale you're looking at, you know, AAA or more indie, like your needs will be met. Or even smaller scale with even smaller teams, right? Like Corrupt. I finally got my hands on Corrupt at Evo and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, everything's very, very much work in progress and a lot of final visuals, final VFX, that kind of stuff, right? But the core is there. It's like single player Marvel, I guess you could say almost. Like Marvel without teammates, but all the insanity of combo structure and uh, just attack and offense. And there's a bunch more. Please forgive me all the other indie titles I'm not mentioning. I know there's a lot of you guys out there, but there's a lot more. There's a lot in development. The indie space for fighting games is very rich right now. And I am talking a lot of new stuff, but a lot of old classic stuff is also hitting in a very big way in the upcoming future. So say the King of Fighters 13, a game that's about 13 years old, funnily enough, right? It's finally getting its proper full rollback netcode release, and it's going to happen this year. Also, Samurai Showdown, also SNK, I believe gets this rollback implemented in full next month. So the classics are doing real good for themselves too, in terms of updating themselves and upgrading themselves for the future generations of players. Not SNK, but much the same. Killer Instinct is getting its first balance patch in five years on top of some networking upgrades and uh, just online upgrades as well, right? And 4K, I think, for Xbox consoles. So that game's been dormant for quite a while, but even that's still getting massive updates and now either the classic audience that enjoyed the game can go back or maybe an all new audience will discover the game. Talking updates, King of Fighters 15, Duo Lawn's coming out. We have another DLC after him, probably season three after that. And heck, keeping with the SNK trend, they're making an all new Fatal Fury game, right? I love the shaders and the art style they're going for. That looks really, really sharp. More details to come in the future because this is more the far flung future of fighting games, right? I don't think this will be next year by any chance, right? Although we'll see more gameplay. But yeah, even the far future's looking good. I love me some Fatal Fury and Grow, so sign me up for this one and speaking of the far-flung future right we've had the present we've had the past the future new fatal fury and hey project l kinda gonna be a very very big deal if you follow the channel you know i've had uh, some decent amount of hands-on with project l myself and this is definitely a game i like a lot it is both a fantastic fighting game and it's got some years in the oven to go once again this is not gonna be a next year game right uh, it's a fantastic fighting game already, and with more refinement and all that kind of stuff in the future, it's going to get better and better and better yet. And I'm a fan of the League of Legends universe. I like the characters. I like the story, the setting, and it's doing very well by that as well. And of course, when we talk like the esports stuff as well, Riot Games knows a thing or two about the esports thing. So I think it's going to be very safe to say that Project L is going to do very right and very well in that regard. Like, we got the heavy hitters, Street Fighter 6 is already out, Mortal Kombat 1 is almost out, and Tekken 8 will probably be out sometime earlier next year. And this could be potentially bigger than all of them, right? And that's nuts, considering how big those titles already are. Basically, what I'm trying to say here, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, is fighting games are very much in a great place already right now, and things are only getting better for the future. Heck, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, already a good fighting game, like an improvement on the original Grand Blue, plus the rollback net code, so it works online, right? Uh, the little Fall Guys minigame is apparently getting its own standalone release that will play along with the main GB vs. Ryzen game. So maybe that'll blow up and become the next Fall Guys in and of itself since it's free to play. Who knows? And then trick people into learning fighting games along the way. 
whatever scale you want to work at, you know, from the high budget games, to lower budget games, all points in between, indie to AAA, right? There's something for everyone now in the FGC, and it's a hell of a time. Right now, the entire genre of fighting games as a whole is as strong as it's been in like decades. There's so much out there, and it's not like the position of like the later 90s where we're just drowned in like clone games, right? Every game is its own unique standalone thing. It's not necessarily nobody stepping on each other's toes. There's not a million cheap knockoff Street Fighter clones. Everyone has their own style, and I'm liking that, right? Because that was a problem back in the old days. What kind of led to the downfall of fighting games was just everyone was just kind of ripping everyone off, right? Everyone is their own truly unique beast this time around, and that's what's going to lead to a lot of health in fighting games. And plus, if you're like me and you just like fighting games in general, that just means there's so much variety and so much to work with. That's great. And I guess just to end off, because I don't know if this video really has a point other than this. Fighting games are the best damn genre of game there is, period. There is no better kind of game than a fighting game. It's been proven time and time again. It's why our genre succeeds when other genres fail and go away. It's why we have the largest age range in competitive gaming compared to anybody else, right? You're not going to be seeing 40 year olds that can succeed and do well in any other competitive genre. You will in fighting games because we create lifers. Once you start in a fighting game, you're here forever. And that's in the best possible way. Because once you get really dug into a fighting game, there's no other genre game that provides that same satisfaction. And we're not dependent on stuff like esports. Esports are nice, I like it, right? It's cool. But we don't need it to succeed and thrive. And the fact that we don't need it is exactly why I think it is succeeding and thriving in esports now. Because we're here one way or the other, and when every other genre falls to dust, you can still find two old guys playing Super Turbo. But yeah, that's really all I gotta say, man. Fighting games rule. Fighting games are in a great place, and it's only getting better and better and better as time goes on, and I'm just happy. So I guess that was a bunch of rambling I don't even know anymore, right? But yeah, it's just such a good time, and otherwise, well, I guess it's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some fighting games.